heal me to the uttermost when I think about the Lord how he picked me up and turned me around how he placed my feet on solid ground when I think about Lord, you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor. 
seek the family. The Lord is my light, my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid of? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and my foes, they stumbled and they fell. Though an army shall camp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war shall rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord. And to inquire in his temple. When the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. The secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. Now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. And I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing. Yes, I will sing praises. To the Lord. Lord, you've been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains you walk forth, wherever you have formed the earth and the world. Even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Return man to destruction. Say, return, O children of men. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it's past. Like a watch in the night. Carry them away like a flood and like a sea. The morning they're like grass which grows up in the morning and flourishes. It grows up in the evening and is cut down and withers. But we've been consumed by your hand. By your wrath we are terrified. We have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your counsels. All our days have passed away in your wrath. We finish our years like a sigh. Who knows the power of your hand? But the fear of you, so is your wrath. So teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Return, O oh Lord. How long? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us early with your mercy, that we may rejoice, be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days in which you have afflicted us, the years in which we have seen you. Let your work appear to the servants and the glory to their children. Let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. You will not allow your foot to be moved in. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming from this time forth. Even for the Lord. Therefore, brother, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit puts death the deeds of the body, 
you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the Spirit of bondage against fear, but you received the Spirit of adoption, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. The children and the heirs. Heirs of God. Joint heirs of Christ. Somebody will be encouraged about this. If indeed we suffer with Him, that we may also be glorified together. Y'all, when I read the Word of God, you know it will be truthful just to testify. Not to this. Amen. Listen to this. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. With the earnest expectation of the creation, eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility. Not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in a hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors to burn pains together until now. Not only that, but we also have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our bodies. When we were saved in this hope, the hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we know not what we should pray as we ought. The Spirit Himself makes intercession for us. The groans which cannot be uttered. Now He searches the hearts, knows what the mind of the Spirit is. Because He makes intercession for the saints. According to the will of God. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Woe, whom he predestined. These he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. Whom he justified, these he also glorified. This will encourage you. And we know that all things work together for good. To those who love God. Is there anyone in this gymnasium that loves God? To those who love God. To those who are the call according to his purpose. What then shall we say to if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall we not with him also free? Give us all things. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect?
prove him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God. Come on, there's no voice in this room. From the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. But now Christ is risen from the dead. Become the first fruits, those who have walked the street. Since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. Was an Adam all died? Even so in Christ all shall be made alive. But each one in his own order. Christ the first fruits. After with those who are Christ and his coming, then come to the end. When he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, when he puts an end to all rule and all authority and all power. He must reign so he put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. When he has put all things under his feet, but when he says all things are put under him, it's evident that he who puts all things under him is accepted. Now when all things are being subject to him, then the Son himself will also be subject to him. He put all things under him that God may be all in all. How are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Foolish one, what you sow is not made alive unless it dies. What you sow, you do not sow that the body shall be. But to be a grain, perhaps we or some other grain. But God gives it a body as he pleases to each seed its own body. Flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of animals, another fish, another birds. There are celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies. But the glory of the celestial is one. The glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars. One star differs from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. By the sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body. And there is a spiritual body. So it is written, the first man Adam became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural. And afterward, the spirit. Now this I say, brother, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit it. Hold us to the We shall not all sleep. We shall be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound. I want to have the meeting people again. And the dead will be raised incorruptible. And we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on it for us. And this corruptible must put on it for time. So when this corruptible has put on it, this mortal has thrown it for time. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your sin? Oh, grave, where is your victory? Sin, death, is sin, strength of sin is law. But thanks be to God who gives us, I'm going to read that again so we can celebrate. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory. To our Lord Jesus Christ. Can you put your hands together and give the Lord some thanks in here? Come on, we don't begin to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt. 
we could go on viewing all day long. But of course you know we have to move on. Amen. So we're going to ask that if you would make preparation to find your seat. Amen. And while you're on the way to your seat, come on and give God glory. See, I, I just have to go. See, there are a little bit. And I know she didn't like nothing today. And so I don't know why you're here this afternoon, but, but, but I come to celebrate life. I come to give God glory.
in whose name I greet you and I give honor to my Lord and Savior Jesus and to amen, the angel who shall break the bread of life to all of our school board officials and staff and amen to all of Rocky Mountain High and to my now new and loving family. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Amen to God. Be the glory. Amen. amen. At this time, amen, let's prepare our hearts as we shall follow the program as it is, as it is uh, present before us. Amen. And there won't be any changes unless directed by the family. Amen. 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 So at this time, amen, let us prepare our hearts for the reading of God's Word, the Old Testament by the Reverend Kenley Davis. Amen. First, Mount Zion Baptist Church, Virginia, and then the New Testament. Amen. By Bishop Shelton Daniels, Greater Joy Baptist Church. Amen. And then, Amen. I shall come back before you. Amen. As we go to God's Amen. Amen. Pull it in character as they come.
Jesus said in the book of John, let not your hearts be true. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house were many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. But Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again. That there where I am, there you may be also. And Thomas raised the question, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Let it be our name. Father God, let's again come before you for the great Jesus. And God, we come this afternoon as our Lord and Savior, we know how. Truly, God, we need you right now. And God, we can't make it without you. So, Father, I pray now that you would come. Oh, God, this family, as they go through this hour, let them know, oh God, that they're not alone. For, Father, you said in your word, no, I'll be with you. Always, even to the end of this world. So, Father, we come now standing upon your word. Oh God, we ask now that you would just throw your loving arms around this family. Oh God, and embrace them in such a time as this. That they may know, oh God, that truly this is a great loss. And that God, they may realize that the pain that they feel is very real. So help them to understand that it's all right to cry. For we can only endure for a night. But joy cometh in the morning. So God, I declare to be born in time. Embrace them so, Father, that they may lean not to their own understanding, but acknowledge you in all their ways, that you shall direct their paths. Embrace them so, God, that they may not look to the left nor to the right, but God, that they will look unto the hills from which cometh their help, knowing, O oh God, that all of their help comes from you. So, Father, we ask now that you would just embrace this community. For truly, God, our hearts have been bound together. And so, Lord God, we ask now that you take the reins, that you would lead in the house. Touch every heart in the room. Oh, Father, that we would know that with you, we can do all things. That we would know that without you, we could do nothing. So God, we love you. We honor you. We magnify you. We give you all glory. And we give you all praise. For you say in all things, give you glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. At this time, amen, let us prepare our hearts. Amen. That we might hear from Tiara's cousins, the Bryan sisters. Amen. As they shall come to us in their very own way, followed by which we will have reflections. Amen. Brother Brian Briggs from Rocky Mountain High. Amen. Uh, to speak on behalf of the students, Elder Angela Hines. Amen. Coach Pam Gaines, Rocky Mountain High Girls Varsity Basketball Team. And then our very own principal, Mr. Farrell, who will come of Rocky Mountain High. And let us come in that order. Amen? Amen. Amen. Come on and encourage them while they come.
that Jesus will fix it. After a while, I must take just a moment before Brian comes to apologize to these brothers. I will just read the program. Come on and encourage the Brian family. Amen. Come on, if God has given anybody a reason to smile, somebody can lift up their hands and say, Lord, I thank you. Because you do all things, God is still good. Because everybody that can possess that God is good. You will not change. Come on, I do wonder that God is good to the end of my life. So Pastor Billy is just because the hour to my pastor, Pastor Dennis Earl Johnson, to all the other pastors, to each and every one of you, I tell you, it is a blessing to be here. But there's a sad truth that says if I speak to her, she can't physically hear me. And there's nothing that I can say that can hinder her progress because now she's in God's hand. So I come not to speak to the class of 2015, but I come to speak encouragement. Is that all right? I, 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 I was heard, I, talk, I was told that there was only two men, so I'm going to try to make it quick if that's all right with you. I just simply want to tell you a story if that's all right. Ago, that is the man who was sent to the earth so that we might live and live on our earth. He lived on a block and he was beat all night long. Two thousand years ago, he was beat all night long. Two thousand years ago, they spit on this man named Love. Two thousand years ago, they talked about a man named Love. Two thousand years ago, they sat and talked about a man named Love. The story is that they put love in the world. They took it.
So I stand here today as a mother that could be doing their baby in the same tragedy. On Saturday morning, she was with Tierra and she said, Mom, you cannot go back to Rocky Mountain. I said, no, you need to stay in Greensboro with your sister. And then the other sister that was at Rocky Mountain was still in Rocky Mountain. So Malaysia says, Mommy, but Shanae is still there. I said, but you need to stay in Greensboro. Tierra was one of her dear friends, but I thank God for the mood of this one today. Because we have brought each other together in love. People that have not seen each other are coming together. And as the young man say that, we've been endures for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. We know that we have no idea what God planned is for us. But one thing John 13 says in 7, Jesus explained and replies, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. And because God has created us and he knows us, because he knows us, he knows our plan. We don't know, but he knows that. And now we know that all things work together for the good. All things work together for the good. We know that Pastor Billy said, and I said, boy, we are the one to Because we don't see the good in this. But we know that it's working to the good for them that love the Lord. And I don't know about you, but I love the Lord today. Do anybody love the Lord today? If you know you love the Lord, you love the Lord. And God is working today. I know that God can because in Peter, you tell us to cast all our cares upon him. For he cares for us. He didn't say how big and how little. But I thank God that I had the opportunity to talk and share and witness to Tierra. And it's not our job to decide which way it goes. But it is our job to understand that we too got to be accountable when we leave here. So if I would leave with you today, Psalms 23 and 4, even though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they come for me. Family, be encouraged. God got you back. And I said, 
Secretary Bell. For Pete's sake, what, what's that book? <laughs> and she said the book is called Making Good Habits and Breaking Bad Habits. <laughs> that is the reason I teach English for a moment like that. If tomorrow starts without me, and I'm not here to see, if the sun should rise and find your eyes filled with tears for me, I wish so much you wouldn't cry the way we did today, by thinking of the many things we didn't get to say. I know how much you love me, as much as I love you. And each time you think of me, I know you'll miss me too. But when tomorrow starts, Without me, please try to understand that an angel came and called my name and took me back home. <laughs> Good evening. I want to give thanks to God for being here on today. I want to honor my personal Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to extend our greetings and a big thank you to Pastor Gilly and his church family, and to Pastor Green and his church family for their humbleness and sacrifice to perform their duty, excuse me, their due diligence in this homegoing service. On behalf of National Economic Public Schools Board of Education, our superintendent, Dr. Anthony Jackson, and the Rocky Mountain High School faculty, staff, and student body. We want to extend our deepest regrets to the Hinton family and the loss of their beautiful daughter, Tierra Roche Hinton. Tierra was 69, as I often refer to her, was a beacon of light for many students at Rocky Mountain High School. She was a vocal leader who earned the respect of the faculty and staff of Rocky Mountain High School. Tierra loved Rocky Mountain High School and was active in many aspects of the school community. She was a student athlete who led her in three sports and had hopes of attending college to play volleyball. A cloud of loss has been over the Rocky Mountain community this week, and the halls of Rocky Mountain High School would never be the same after the loss of our beloved Tierra. There's an old song that says, May the works I've done speak for me. Because when I'm resting in my grave, and there's nothing that I can say, May the works I've done speak for me. And if we can look around this gym today, and if you could consider all the acts of kindness that have been extended to the Hinton family this week, then you know that Tierra is indeed loved. That even in death, she is still touching us all. And in my closing, I want to say to the Hinton family, and to all who love Tierra, death is never easy. And although it seems that Tierra was taken from us much too soon, the God we serve does not make any mistakes. The songwriter Donald Lawrence says, God is the author and finisher of your faith. Stay in faith. You may not know how you're going to get there, but just walk by faith. You may not know how you're going to live there, but the just shall live by faith. You can't even see the purpose that's waiting there, but trust the author of your faith. For the rest of my life, I'm not making sense. I'm making faith. Oh, yeah. oh, sorry. 
We can't make sense of Tierra's death. It's too complicated to understand. So our only true resort is to trust God and to walk by faith. If we want to honor Tierra's life, then we need to make the most of our own lives. Tierra would want that because she was taking advantage of every opportunity and the gifts that were given to her. God bless all of you, and we pray for God's peace upon the Hindu family. Thank you. Let the church say amen. amen. Come on, say amen again. Amen. To God be the glory for all the great things that he has done truly. I just want to take uh, man, just an opportunity to tell this family just how much I love and appreciate you for having me to come and be a part of this awesome celebration. And we just bid you God's speed as we shall continue to pray for you. Amen? Amen. 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 Because this is my last stand. I'm going to give you the order of the rest of the service and then I'm going to take my seat. But I just want to say unto this family, the song that says, Be strong, my brother. Be strong, my sister. Be strong wherever this life leads you. You can depend on God to see you through, but you can depend on me to pray for you. So I just want to encourage you, my beautiful family, to lift up your heads, even lift them up in everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty and God. He is the King of glory. So be encouraged today. I know that everything that appears to be over your heads is still on God's feet. Amen. 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 Come on, bless the Lord. Amen. At this time, let us prepare our hearts for the acknowledgments by Minister Amen. Jacqueline Jenkins, and then we'll have the reading of our obituary silently. And then Sister Orgis will come to us in song, and then we shall hear a man from the man of God, who is so affectionately called Pastor G. Amen. 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 Come on and bless him. Psalms 46 and 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. To the family, lean on Jesus and listen. Tisha, Michael, Micaiah, Miss Elizabeth, on behalf of Pastor James Gilbert and the Word of Tabernacle Church family, we count it an honor and a privilege to serve you during this time of your loss of your beautiful daughter, Tierra. We just want you to know that even after today, you have friends at Word Tabernacle Church. Acknowledgements, cards and letters and church resolutions are too many to read today. But you can rest assured that when the family read them, it still will be a time of comfort and encouragement. We have letters from the city of Rocky Mount, Word Tabernacle Church, Rocky Mount, New Hope Outreach Ministries, Rocky Mount, St. Rose Church of Christ, Wilson, North Carolina. I would like to read two letters. North Carolina General Assembly, House of Representatives. The family of Ms. Tierra Lachey Hinton. Dear family, please accept my sincere condolences on the loss of your loved one, Ms. Tierra Lachey Hinton. I know this must be a difficult time for each of you, for someone to be taken from us at such an early age is not an easy thing to bear. Please take comfort in the fact that she touched so many lives in such a positive way in a few years she had with us. Though your grief may be overwhelming now, I pray that sorrow will soon be replaced by memories 
of the loving relationship you share together. Sincerely, Bobby Richardson. Nash Rockingham Public School System. Dear Mr. and Mrs. Hinton, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, 1 through 2, reminds us that to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose Amen. under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. Please find comfort in knowing that Tierra now is proudly in a beautiful bouquet handpicked by God. On behalf of the Nash Rocky Mount Public School System, we extend our deepest condolences to you and your entire family on the loss of your daughter, Tierra Michelle Hinton. Although the words can really help ease the loss she bear, just know that you and your family are in our daily thoughts and prayers. May the love of those around you provide comfort as you struggle to understand the decision of the Creator. Finding the right words to express the feelings of the school district can be very difficult. Tiara was an inspiration to so many in this community. Her former teachers at Inglewood, Edwards, as well as her parent teachers, administrators and friends at Rocky Mount High School, all echoed the same sentiment that Tiara was a beautiful, intelligent, and talented young lady. All of us recognize that we are fortunate to have known her and will keep her spirit alive with many fond memories in the coming days. The Nash Rocky Mount Public Schools family commits to be here for you. Makaya and your family in the days ahead. May the peace that comes from the memories of love shared come for you. May you take comfort in knowing that angels are watching over Tiara as she rests. Hold tight to memories for comfort. Lean on your friends for strength and always remember how much we care. Sincerely, Dr. Dr. Anthony Jackson, Superintendent of Schools, Nash Rocky Mountain Public Schools, Ms. Evelyn Hines Board Chair, Nash Rocky Mountain Board of Education. Thank you, seems just so small for your support. We will not forget your prayers, acts of kindness, cards, food, floral designs, visits, and all the other acts of kindness and support shown during the passing of our sweet together. May God continue to bless you and keep the Hinton family in your daily prayers. We love you and could not have made you through this without you. We would like to give a special thanks to Pastor Thomas R. Green, the staff and students of Rocky Mountain High School, Pastor James Gellner and Word Tabernacle Church family, Hunter Hill Cafe, William Jones, Felicia Hedgepath, and all our family members and friends. You all have made us feel so loved and special. Thank you so very much. To the family and everyone present in this room today, God bless you, Jesus loves you, may the Holy Spirit comfort you, if you know it.
Thank you, God, that you are a prayer answering God and a covenant keeping God. Thank you, God, that all your ways are perfect, even though they're sometimes unknown and confusing to us. God, would you touch the person I'm touching right now? God, move in their life, show yourself mighty in their behalf. God, we lift up Tierra's family before you right now. We pray, God, that you would be a God of healing, a God of comfort, a God of deliverance. We lift God this hospital before you and every student in our community. Pray now, God, that by your spirit you enable us to rightly divide your word. Give us, God, a word that we will live and not die. A word, God, that when I leave, I'm better than how I came in here. Give us, God, information for our heads, inspiration for our hearts, and implementation for our hands. Heal and deliver according to your word. Save for your name's sake. And God, bless this person I'm touching in an unusual way. Open doors for them they've never thought would open. Make ways for them they've never thought would be made. Let this be a defining moment in their life. That when we leave this place, God, we'll leave here better than how we walked in here. Speak, Lord, for we are children of this. It's in the strong name of Jesus we ask it. And the people of God together said, Amen and Amen again. Can we clap our hands and give the Lord some thanks for the day? To Michael, to Tisha, to Makai, to all of the faculty and to the students of Rocky Mountain High School, particularly to Mr. Farrell and his leadership here. I think we all thank God for the principal, the vice principal, and all of the staff here at Rocky Mountain High. Mr. Farrell, Mr. Archer, to all of the coaches, to Dr. Anthony Jackson for his leadership in our city and in our school system, to all of our community leaders and to our pastors that are here. I'm grateful for all of the pastors that are here in the pulpit and here sitting before me. To Pastor Green for presiding today, and to my friend Bishop Shelton Daniel for his participation. I want to bring you greetings from the Word Tabernacle Church, from our staff from our leadership. Tierra was not a member of our church. But for the nine years that I've been in this city, we have believed and we still believe that even though everyone in the community does not belong to our church, we believe that the church belongs to everybody in the community. So we're grateful for the opportunity to stand before you. Four reasons we gather together for a funeral. The first reason why we gather together for a funeral is so that we might commend the life of the deceased. Most times when you come to a church service or a funeral service, they would reference that in the program as an obituary or a eulogy. Book of Corinthians tells us that we are living letters to be read of all men. That means that ultimately, y'all, we are all preaching our own eulogies. That's why we've got to be careful about how we live our lives, careful about whether or not we keep our word, careful about how we love our families and our friends. Because the truth of the matter is that Tiara has already preached her eulogy, y'all. And that's why so many people are here. Y'all don't know this, but the Black Box Theater is overflowing as well with people watching on a webcast. And so we have to be careful how we live our lives because we're commending our own lives as we live them. We don't just gather together to commend Tierra's life, she's already done that. But we gather together that we might comfort the family and the friends. The problem with that is that comfort is not a feeling. Comfort is a person. Jesus Christ said, I've got to go away, but I'm going to send you another comforter. And those of us who know the Lord for ourselves will tell you, there's some days you don't feel safe. There's some days you don't feel good. There's some days you don't feel like crazy. There's some days you don't feel like doing good. But when there's something inside of you, on the inside, you can wipe a tear with one hand and throw up another hand and begin to praise God and worship Him because comfort is a person. 
God we serve is a God of comfort. The reality of it is though we read a program and though we've had music and though we've had comments and remarks and though our preaching, though we've read scripture, we will only leave here comforted if we know the God of comfort. We gather together to commend her life. Sierra's already done that. We gather together that we might comfort those of us who have come. But God is a God of comfort. The third reason why we gather together, this swelling group of people will testify to this. That we gather together that we might congregate the family in the community. But if we were to be honest, y'all, you and I look around us. I mean, I've been in this gymnasium many times. And I want to remind us, family, in a loving way, if you can handle the true community, is that as much as it is awesome that all of us have gathered together and congregated as a result of the death of Tierra, what would our city look like if we could gather together and congregate together, not over the death of our children, but over the life of our children? I want to remind you that when we leave here, we need to pack out the gym for the volleyball game and the basketball game and pack out the arena and pack out the... Oh, y'all don't want to talk to me again. Yeah? Because if we can gather together, I need y'all to hear me, if we can put her, front, her picture on the front page of the telegram when she is dead, then we can put pictures of our young people who are excelling and doing well on the front page of the telegram when they're still alive. If we can put on the marquee of Rocky Mount High School in digital display, we love you, Tierra, that next week we can put another child's name that's still alive on the marquee that says, I. And we have to be reminded, though, that there's still events and games and activities. And as much as I'm grateful for pastors and churches, and the systems working together. It ought not take our children dying in order for us to congregate together. We gather together. I won't preach long. We gather together so we might commend Sierra's life. She's already done that. We gather together that we might comfort family and friends, but God is a God of comfort. We gather together that we might congregate as a family, a community, and a city. But here's the real reason we come together for a few That you and I, that we might challenge the living. And nothing I'm gonna preach is gonna bring Sierra back. And although I did not know her personally as well as many of you have, her death is still personal for me because I love Rocky Mountain High. I care about this family and I care about this city. The truth of the matter is, as I have told the mother and father, I also know what it feels like to lose a child in a car accident. And let me speak to Michael and Tisha for just a moment. Because it's a different kind of pain when you lose a child. When you lose a parent, it feels like you lost your past. When you lose a spouse, feels like you've lost your presence. But when you lose a child, feels like you've lost your future. When a wife loses her husband, she's called a widow. When a husband loses his wife, he's called a widower. When a child loses their parents, they are called an orphan. But when a parent loses their child, there's not even a word in the English language to describe it. And at a moment like this, teacher, it's gonna be a bunch of folk that wanna give you a whole lot of advice. It's gonna be a bunch of people telling you it's gonna be all right, a bunch of people telling you this and telling you that. They're gonna have gossip. They're gonna have perspective. They're they, they, they gonna have a word here and a word here. And young people hear me. Bunch of folk wanna walk around giving us advice. But all advice is not good advice. In this world of social media, television, radio, 
Instagram and Facebook. It is easy to get advice. Everybody got advice. Rich gang got advice about my lifestyle. Rappers and R&B artists got advice telling me don't tell them. Beyonce got advice about being flawless. T.I. got advice about the money. MTV got advice about being 16 and pregnant. Advice about being a teen mom. And advice about faking it. But when I look around me, I don't see MTV and Beyonce. At the end of the day, what I need to get through a moment like this is not advice from man, but I need a word from my God. I want to speak a word for just a moment. The word I want to speak is about choices. Everybody shout choices. Ecclesiastes chapter number 12 is a word from us from the wisest and wealthiest man that has ever lived. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 1. In the A verse, verse A portion of that verse, we are told by this wise man, remember your creator in the days of your youth. I'm going to say it again. Remember your creator in the days of your youth. Embedded in these nine words are four choices for you and I. I want to share them very, very quickly and in five minutes I'm done preaching. The first choice we have to make about remembering our creator in the days of our youth is that first of all it is a choice about my posture. Look at your neighbor and tell them, watch your posture. Yo, if you would be honest, there's a bunch of stuff that can make you go through life with your head held down. There's a bunch of folk that will ride your back and you don't feel like you can make it. But Solomon writes here, he says, in the midst of all of that, let me give you some advice. Remember your creator. Let me help y'all for a moment. What that means is that everything is not lost. You better remember your creator. There's going to be moments when you don't want to lift up your head, but if you remember your creator, it's easy for us to get up in the morning and remember my bills are due. Easy. You're going to have some moments where you're going to remember your baby ain't here right now. You're going to have some moments where you're going to remember losses in your life. There's a moment when you're going to wake up remembering what the diagnosis the doctor gave you was. But the Solomon says here, remember the creator. You know what he's saying? Above everything else, I don't wake up in the morning remembering that God is dead, that God is still alive, that God is still looking down. Is there anybody here that can look back over your life and know that as long as God is on the throne, that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly and above all that we can ask, hope, think, or even imagine? He says, watch the posture. He's teaching us, y'all, that when you and I live over our lives, remember your creator. He says, remember it was God that put the clothes on our back. It was God that gave us another day. Maybe I'm the only one that's grateful for another day. But I do hope we recognize when we look at Tiara's life that there is a day called too late. A whole bunch of us wish I had time to go back Bunch of us look at life and wish I had time to apologize or time to make certain decisions. And this is no slang and no, 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 no insult against public education. But public education, I'm a product of it, teaches us that there are seven days in a week. And that's good in terms of academics. But when you start living life teaching, you start to recognize there ain't seven days in a week. There's eight days in a week. Say, so Pastor, then you out of order. It's not eight days in a week. It's just Sunday through Saturday. No, there's an eighth day. There's a day rotating around every week. And that day is called too late. Because if I put off something that I ought to do today and put it off until tomorrow, I know you're expecting that tomorrow is Sunday. But if I die without handling it tonight, then tomorrow is Tomorrow is too late. And there's some of us that need to make up in our mind that God brought me to this place so I don't have to embrace a day called too late. 
says, remember your creator in the days of your youth. Says, first of all, it's a choice about your posture. You can leave here crying or you can leave here rejoicing. You can leave here believing it won't be all right or believing it will be all right. There's a choice about your posture. But the second choice in the text is not just a choice about posture. It's a choice about the people in my life. Everybody shout people. He says, remember your creator. You know, the God that we serve is a God that is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That God himself even watches. This is going to help somebody who we hanging out with. God himself watches. And young people, listen to me. We have to be careful about the company we keep. We have choices to make about who we hang out with. Choices we make about who we run with. My daddy and mama used to tell me when I was growing up, don't hang out with folk that have less to lose than you do. Some of us, now that we're a little bit older, come on, be honest with me, y'all. You look back over your life and you've gotten yourself in a mess over who you hung out with. And if God doesn't teach us anything else, I need to be reminded about the people I hang out with. Y'all remember that thief that was hanging on the cross. Jesus was dying. It was a thief on one side and a thief on the other side. One of them looks over and says, says Yo, you can save me. He's believing who Jesus is. Jesus looks back at him and says, today you will be with me in paradise. You know what blessed me about that? His whole life, he had been hanging out with the wrong people. His whole life, y'all not hearing me right now. His whole life, he had the wrong company. And even though he was up on the cross, watch this, he was hanging on the cross. And he was right next to Jesus, which means the first time he was hanging with the right person. And when you get to hanging with the right person, it's amazing how God, is there anybody that can look back over your life and bless God that he has taught me how to hang with the right person. Young people, you got to hear me. You got to watch who you hang with. Remember your creator. It's a choice about your passion. It's a choice about people. I'm almost done. But he says, remember your creator in the days of your youth. It's a choice about being, I'm in a school, I got to say this, a pupil. Right. I, I, I was sharing this with some friends. I said, I don't want to say this in sermon because I don't want to offend Dr. Jackson. They said, well, you, you in church when you're up in there. Get the language, y'all. Remember your creator. Not remember who you evolved from. Y'all didn't catch it. He said, he said, you gotta remember, you didn't just come from apes. Y'all not hear me. He says, you gotta remember your creator. That means y'all, I've gotta recognize that the God I serve created me. God don't create no jump. We didn't come from a big bang. We didn't come from evolution. And the only way you will to know that is you got to do some study of your own. You got to be a pupil. You got to be a learner. And we've got to remember, y'all, that the most dangerous folk in society are not the folks that belong to gangs and not the folk that live a loose life. The most dangerous person is a thinking person, a person that's got education, the person that knows how to mobilize, the person that the person that can articulate those are dangerous people. Young people hear me. Make a choice about your education, about being a pupil. And there's one last thing, and I'm done. I gotta make a choice about my priorities. Remember, get this, your creator in the days of your youth. What, how did God create us? He created us a body, soul, and spirit. If I remember my creator, then I remember how he created me. Hope some of y'all can get what I'm about to say. There's more to us than our bodies. Yeah. I'm going to say it one more time. There's more to us than our bodies. Let me tell you why that matters. Because some of us treat our bodies 
like all there is to me is a body. And when you and I don't have this body no more, then how in the world am I going to survive if I don't have my body? Well, inside of me is more than a body. I got a spirit and I got a soul. And I'm here to tell young people and the family, don't put more priority on your body than you do your spirit and your soul. And one of the challenges of our society is we spend more time tattooing our body than training our body. Preach past again. We spend more time eating and entertaining than we do educating. Problem with that? One of these old days. This body ain't gonna get, be here no more. One of these old days. It's like having y'all, if it's you, don't, don't just, just wink at me. It's like the folk that got like the really cheap cars. And like the rims cost more than the cars. And you got more on the frame. Y'all not talking to me. Than you do in the engine. But can I help you? It don't matter how pretty it look and how high it stands if it don't turn on. Let me help you. It don't matter how long your weave is and how what kind of nails that you got. If you don't know how there's something on the inside, then all that outside stuff don't matter. And we gotta make a decision, y'all, and a choice that I'm gonna put more in me than I put on me. Cause one of these days, I gotta give up the ghost and I gotta give up my body. And when I give up my body, the only thing that's gonna matter is whether or not I've got a relationship with Jesus Christ. I've lived long enough to know. When I came right now, I had hair. <laughs> I came here, I, I didn't have thick glasses, I, I hardly had glasses on. I ain't had no gray. No folk I passed. Lost my hair, turned gray. And there's some folk that's a little bit older. Let me help y'all. Used to be a time I could slam dunk the basketball. I don't think I can even touch the net right now. Because there's a moment in your life where your body don't do what it used to do. Come on, there's some older folk that can testify. But you know what, that ain't the worst thing in the world. It ain't the worst thing in the world that my body don't do what it used to do. The worst thing in the world is when I've not spent time getting myself right with God. And part of the reason God brought you in this gymnasium today is that I might get right with God. Don't you leave here the same. Don't you leave here without investing on the inside. Somebody shout, it's a choice. Adam and Eve ate the fruit. It was a choice. Cain killing his brother was a choice. Noah building the ark was a choice. Judas betraying Jesus was a choice. God sending his son Jesus into the world was a choice. And I'm here to tell somebody, receiving him as Lord and Savior is a choice. Young man was dead on when he said this. Nothing that happened in this room today could Tierra hear. She don't, she don't know nothing about a tear. She don't know nothing about a word that was spoken. So when we gather together for a funeral, it's not so much to say goodbye to our loved one. It's so that we might say hello to my creator. God brought you here. You might say hello to your creator. It's a choice. You can leave here today saved, you leave here unsaved. It's a choice. You can leave here today better with God or worse with God. It's a choice. And I'm not standing here to convince you I'm not preaching to join Word Tabernacle Church. I don't care about that. I do care about where you and I are going to spend eternity. Amen. Close on quick little story. I don't know if people in the South, I'm from Philadelphia. People in the South have what's called a hoopty. A hoopty is a car that don't go far. You got to drive just a short little distance. When you got to go distances, you got to rent you a car. Because your hoopty won't take you there. Let me tell you about your body and my body. Your body and my body will never get us all the way to heaven. 
is a hoop. One of these days, God is going to come looking for us. And when you and I unzip this body, what's going to really matter is what's on the inside. So if you're here today, you don't have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why God brought you in this room. I want to pray for this family. And I want to pray for you. And as I pray for you, I just want you to assess the choices in your life. Choices about your posture. About the people, about whether or not you're going to be a pupil, and about what your priorities are. Everybody all over the room, just bow your head and close your eyes. God, I want to pray for the Henry family right now. I want to pray, God, that you bless them with peace and comfort. God, I want to pray that you would help them to live out what is recorded in the book of Revelations. That they might strengthen what remains. Pray God for all of the young people at Rocky Mountain High School. My prayer God is they might remember their creator. In the days of their youth. So God I want to pray now that if there's anyone in this room. Every head is bowed, every eye is closed. I'm not going to ask you to stand up. I'm not going to ask you to get up. I'm not going to ask you to say anything. But if you're in this room today without a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, if you're in this room, you don't have a church home where you're growing and serving God, and you know, you know what, I need to make some better choices in my life. Nobody's looking at you, nobody has heaven or hell to put you in. But if you know you need God in your life, if you know you need church, if you know you need some different people in your life, would you just, don't stand up, don't get up, but would you just slip your hand and pass that's me? I need a relationship with God. I see your hand. Wherever you are, I see your hand. I see your hand. Wherever you are, just slip it up real quick. I see your hand. Come on, I need to get right. We got these different choices. Don't be, don't be shy. Don't be bashful. I see your hand. I see your hand. God, I thank you for the hands that are going up right now. God, they are hands not out of emotion. Hands that are consciously making a decision. That in this celebration of life, Tierra the shake hands need to make some better choices. So I'm praying now, God, for those hands of salvation, those hands of getting better priorities, those hands I'm going to be a better pupil. I pray now, God, that you would seal that decision even before today is out. Thank you, God, for everyone that's been in this room today. Thank you for those that are watching on the internet, those that are in the overflow areas. And I pray, God, now your choice blessings upon each person that's in this room today. Bless this mother and this father and this sister. Move mightily in their life. Of all that you're doing and for who you are, we give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. For it's in the strong name of Jesus we ask it. And the people of God together say, Amen and Amen. Can we clap our hands and give the Lord some thanks for you? I'm going to invite H.D. Pope to come up and make his final remarks. While he's come up and make his final remarks and we get instructions, there's about seven or eight churches in Rocky Mountain that have youth pastors out there in the foyer. Any of you that raise your hand or want somebody to talk to or share that decision with, they love to pray with you, they love to talk with you. Doesn't matter what church it is, but just get with somebody about that decision you made, about that choice you made. We're going to get our final remarks from the Pope Funeral Home and then we'll be prepared to go to the cemetery.